All right, Gina, one of the questions that we've gotten a lot is, okay, you want to go out and work for yourself. You want to go out and start a business. And we, we hear this a lot from our students because construction is a very uh, entrepreneurial-based business. People can go out and start their own business very easily. On point. But how, how do you, once you establish that business, how does a person start to generate revenue? Like what's the basis of how they formulate their business? And we yeah. kind of, every time we're asked a question, we ask another question to get them to tell us the response. Okay. So you came up with the two questions in which we ask others is to, okay, you want to do this? Here's question number one. And what, what is that? Well, question number one is you have to observe the market, observe the people in the market, their behaviors, and ask yourself, what problem are they ha having and how are you going to solve that problem? What okay. problem are you going to solve? That's a generic problem to many people. Not a specific problem, but it has to be generic. So it's a problem-solving exercise. So it's, we're going to look right. at it from a larger picture as... Right. What, what, what problem are they having? What problem do you wish to solve? And the second part or the corollary to that is who are you going to get to help you? Okay. And in life and business, you need a partner. Your first most important partner is your spouse or your significant other. <clears throat> you have to choose wisely. A lot of people run into it with their heart. They don't think it through. It has to be a combination of your mind and your heart because there is and no... The, and the same thing can be said with a business partner, not just a personal right. relationship. Right, so I'm going to get to the partner in a, minute, in a minute. So in yoga, we used to say that there is no thought without an emotion and there is no emotion without a thought. So there's a balance between emotions of the heart and the logical thinking brain and it kind of comes here to your throat, which is the truth. The truth <laughs> chakra comes out. <laughs> So you have to find a partner. It's, you talked about it a little bit when you started your business, you felt alone. And then you, we started having these conversations that you were able to bounce ideas and generate more revenue. The story I have about the problem solving is that, you know, I love to go to the leadership lecture ser series and I drag you along with me to it. We love this thing. It's at FIU. FIU <clears throat> put on by the College of it's the Honors, uh, College. Honors College. The uh, leadership over there, they bring in leaders from throughout the industry, throughout the world. They come, they give a little bit of a lecture, a talk, and they usually have a book, and they give out the book and talk about it. So the last guy that I saw that spoke to this thing about the problem was a guy named Jeff Hoffman, not Huffman. And Jeff turned out to be the creator. He was a software guy and he hated his job. His mom had always told him, go to school, get a degree, Look, get a good job. I think most people hate their jobs. Let's just put that out there right now yeah. because your company owns your job, but you own your career. Exactly. We've said that a million times. Right. So he was sick of being sick. He was sick and tired of being, being sick, sick and tired. Sick and tired, exactly. <laughs> so he had this vision in his head that he loved to travel. And he wanted to combine whatever he was going to do for his life or his career or to make money that it would include travel. And travel is not cheap. <clears throat> so one time he was going to go on a trip. He got to the airport. You know, airports after 911, you got to get there early, got to be on time, check in, do all that stuff. Well, he got there and there was a huge line and he missed his flight. <laughs> so he got to thinking, man, there's got to be a better way to do this. And he came up with Priceline.com. So this was during the dot com boom. And I forget the other Jeff, but there's three Jeffs. There's Jeff Hoffman, Jeff Bezos, and another Jeff. I forgot what he started. The problem he solved was that of getting your ticket fast and getting check-in and getting your luggage into the system. And I think a lot of the airlines <clears throat> saw what he created and probably adopted that internally to process the baggage entry and right. 
ticketing and all that so stuff his, faster and faster. His initial foray into the business was Priceline.com. It's a place like eBay, but you were setting your own price, basically like arbitrage. <clears throat> you were shopping for the best price for a flight. You want to spend your money at the destination, not on the airplane. <laughs> so he also <laughs> came up <clears throat> with this thing called SSDs, which are self-service devices. We gave it another name now, a kiosk. So you go to the airport, there's the little machine, you usually put your ID or your passport, or you can key in some information. You don't need a physical person to, <coughs> to handle help those you. things off. And right, and you get to select your seat, it prints out your tags for your luggage, it prints the boarding pass, and it streamlined the whole process. And he combined that, <clears throat> his love of travel with another business is solving people's problems. And that was the best example I can give you of solving another problem. But you can't do it alone. So you have to have a partner. There has to be a business partner or even your life partner can help you. I see this one lady <clears throat> that her husband's a dentist and she became the office manager. Yeah. So they, we see these partnerships all the time. And my story about partnership is that Hewlett had Packard. So you had Hewlett Packard. You got the Steve's. So you had Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. They were the partners that created Apple. And even a renowned businessman like Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, they had a mentor. Yeah. And their partner mentor was Charlie Munger. I, he's up in the years now. He may have passed now. Yeah, but yeah, he was a, Munger passed. He was a brilliant financial mind. Yeah. And he was the mentor or partner of both Gates and Buffett. And Buffett. <clears throat> so everybody needs a partner to help solve these problems. So it, it can't be so egoistic or egotist that you are doing this because you're gonna make money, you're gonna to, gotta to make money, you gotta pay the bills. <clears throat> no, you're doing it to solve a genuine problem. The revenue the revenue <coughs> comes in due time. Yeah. But if you're what what do you call it? Uh, if you're just exchanging time for money? No, oh, that's the worst. That's what we do in corporate America. That's every what day. you're doing in corporate America. So, uh, a lot of people are saying, "Well, if I work two hours, I get a hundred bucks or something of that nature." That's just an exchange of your time for money, but you you have to think about it in a in a larger something that'll scale up. Yeah, scale up. Or right. if you're going to exchange time for money, that it's yeah. a it's at a larger yeah. scale where you're sol solving a larger right. problem. But you see these. I and I I don't I don't hate on any of the entrepreneurs out there that are trying to get to something but we kind of have to draw the line somewhere to say is what you're doing a hobby or right. is a side business yeah is it a is it a side <clears throat> business or you're just doing it for fun to generate a couple extra bucks or you you're actually solving a problem I yeah. I use the uh, classic case of people that make, you know, uh, handmade jewelry or candles. That that how that that may be uh, it's a viable enjoyable. Business. Yeah. It may be fun. It may, but are you solving a problem? Right. So that's what we try to think about yeah. when when we tell people if they're starting a business, uh, what what to shoot for, and to think yeah. larger into a larger picture than just th yeah. this their small little vacuum that they're operating in. The other quote that I love is Buffett. He says that he'd rather have 1% of 100 people's time than 100% of his time. Of course. You get a little piece of everybody. And the corollary is what Steve Jobs used to say, which is he loved to hire people smarter than him and they tell him what to do. In business, we make this mistake of trying to tell people everything what to do. They have another one. I don't remember exactly how the quote is, but uh, if you're the smartest person in the room, eventually yeah. you're going to be alone or something of yeah. that nature. Yeah. You need to be the dumbest person in the room. Have a lot of smart people in the room with you, especially if you're a business owner. Hire smarter people. Yeah, 100%.